name is Robert Stewart Bean. I'm a retired Air Force major, and I've flown many type of aircraft for the United States Air Force and the country of the United States which I dearly love. I am going to tell you uh, some interesting, I hope, uh, uh, stories that I have in my, the back of my mind and I want to tell you there are many things that I think about when flying and I had to wait quite a bit of uh, time before I went to training in uh, San Antonio, Texas. In fact, all my training was in Texas to many different fields. With, uh, so when, when you left, you left Philadelphia and went for your training in, in Austin? I went, I, went, I went by way of, of uh, Fort Bragg and then uh, San Antonio and then uh, many different fields in Texas. My father was a, he was a navigator and a machine gunner in the back of an old biplane. And his interest, or his interest was mainly me. I was an only child and uh, and I suppose that I derived uh, the interest in aviation from him. And I trained in, uh, I went to training in, in 19, I can't remember the exact date, but I, I went for training from Fort Bragg, North Carolina to, to Texas, and then took all my training at several different fields in Texas. The first one being uh, San Antonio, which is a ground school, and the next one was primary flying school where we soloed aircraft. The next one was basic at Randolph Field, Texas, which was known as the West Point of the Air and still is. And then I graduated, I went to Moorfield Mission, Texas for my, my training as, uh, I, in other words, we the, was home. We had to learn a fly formation and many different things in the Air Force and finally before we before we uh, before we got our wings we had to fly if your instructor recommended you and you wanted to you could fly a P-40 and that in itself is a wild thing that I'd like to tell you about. Please do. Tell us about the P-40. So you trained on the P-40 is that correct? You went from a... We, a, flew, a, we, flew, we flew P-40s. You flew them, and that, we, oh, here I go. Flying a P-40 was different because we had, we were, it was a single engine airplane and nobody was in the other cockpit to correct our mistakes. We had to do it right the first time, which, which ended, ended up like, I ended up laughing, really. <laughs> because the P-40 was, was a different type of aircraft than any we'd ever flown. It was really complicated. And why is it complicated? It was complicated by the landing gear that folded back and up and moved at the same time. And when this when this happened, you had to hold the trigger down for the whole whole t travel of the landing gear and, and when it went up into the fuselage. And uh, the it it wasn't it wasn't it sounds easy, but it's not an easy thing to do because on the throttle on the aircraft there was a uh, a lock that you had to use to keep it from slipping back. Well, don't you know that mine did slip back? The tower is saying you're streaming black smoke, and and uh, I just I said the hell with the tower. I'm not paying any attention. I got trouble here in the cockpit. So at the end, and then at the end of the uh, at the end of, I would say I was about about a half a mile out and I still didn't have everything under control and the ground was coming up and I scared the devil out of myself so I got to do something quick. So I, I stopped and fooling around and put, opened the throttle and got the hell out of there. So how did that end up? It ended up perfectly because I made a perfect landing where the aircraft didn't crack it up or hurt anybody. Oh, that's great. So <laughs> you went from flying, your first airplane was it was a T, T6s? No, my first airplane was a PT... PT-19. Uh, PT, I think it was, is that what I said it was, a PT-19? I think that's what it might be. It, it's, it's an open cockpit two-seater, yeah. Yeah. It was a funny looking little plane kind of. That's right. So you started with those in Texas. Yes, we start. We we soloed. We soloed this type of aircraft in, 
in Texas, and then we went to uh, basic training at Randolph Field, and I got the oldest airplanes that we ever had and had to fly those, BT-14, which I wasn't too happy with. But I got through it, and I said, if I could fly that, I could fly anything, and that's my thoughts all the way through flying school. Great. So then you graduated from those and went on to what? What do you mean? What airplane did you train with after that? Well, I went to, uh, okay, then I trained, I trained on, um, I went to advanced flying school where we flew T-6s, which is a wonder, like a Cadillac. The cat was a Cadillac in the air, and they, they, we flew formation, and we were, we were in a place called, um, we are in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas where they grew oranges. And on Sunday afternoon or any time I could get up there, I was up there and we could smell orange blossoms at 8,000 feet. That's amazing, isn't it? It's the truth. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? I hate to tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, at this time in your life, you're, are you itching to get into the into the war? Are you excited, or what? I how did you feel? I was very much excited, and I was in with a bunch of people just like me, and we were, all had the same ideas, and we we were we were great together. So now, do you remember about what year this this was in '41? I graduated 43E, which which was in June of 1943. Okay. That's when I got my wings. Okay, so the war was in full throttle at that point. Yes. And you knew you were going to see combat. Yes. Almost surely, but you didn't know where you were going to go yet, right? No. Okay. So let's get back up to the P-40 would have been the, the most souped up aircraft that you trained with. Yes. Right. That was the bad boy for training. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to get the P forty into because I flew a P forty for a while, and then I said, "I'm going to kill myself in this." I can't tell. I can't tell you. Well, can I? Yeah. Sure. I, I, huh? Of course you can. This is your personal interview. Wait a minute. Tell us anything you want. Let me think it out. Well, I'm just trying to get a general timeline. So, once you left T sixes, you went to P forties, right? Yes, in the Pacific. And no, you were training in the States, though, with the P-40? No. Oh, okay. I just flew it that one time. Oh, okay. And then, then, we, then we had to go over and fly the other aircraft, too. Okay, but you weren't flying bombers yet. That wasn't no, in a part of the program no, yet. No. And the reason I was flying bombers was because I knew I was going to kill myself. With it. And I don't want to tell all that kind of stuff, you know? Well, it's nerve-wracking. You know, another friend of ours that flew a P-51, his airplane was called Weary Willie. Yeah. Because he was weary the whole time he was up there, and he'll admit it. He said when he came down, his knees were shaking. Well, that's possible. So but not every guy is as hard as a rock up there, you know. Oh, uh, well, I wasn't either. It was as hot as the Dickens. Yeah. The, the, the in the cockpit. There. So let's get back to you were in Texas for your, you, you got your wings in Texas. I got my, mate, let's see. 1943, 43E was my class. So I got my I got my wings, and then we got a 10-day leave, and we went to the Pacific. And you knew before you left on leave, you were headed to the Pacific, though. You got your orders. Uh, no. Not until you returned from Not leave. To, then we got when I came back from leave, they said you're going to the Pacific, and you're, you'll take part in the Pacific War. So now at this time you're in the Army, though, right? Yeah. This is the Army Air Corps. Yes. And how did that news find you when you heard you were going to the Pacific? How'd that make you feel? I, I got I got the news when I returned when I returned to um, let's see what was the base um, when I returned to Moorfield Mission, Texas. They said you're all going to the Pacific. Your your bunch. The other group are going to Europe. Okay. So I, I ended up in the Pacific. They put us on us. They put us on a ship and shipped us to Hawaii. Okay, so you left out of like San Diego, or where did you leave out of? Do you remember? We California, one of the California ports. I forget which one it was. Okay. And we, we went to uh, we went to the island of um, well, we went to the Hawaiian Islands, and we we started to fly again. Well, when you when you arrived in Hawaii, did you go to Pearl Harbor? Uh, did I? Did no. you see the damage from the attacks? No. No. Okay. No, I I can't remember seeing. It. Okay. So when you got to Hawaii, what happened next? Well, th then we 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 trained in, in P40s for a while, 
And finally, because of something that happened down in the Pacific, because of something that happened on the B-24s where they need co-pilots, which they did. They needed co-pilots because we lost one because the pilots were checking out and the aircraft crashed and killed them. So I proceeded to be transferred as a co-pilot in the B-24. Now, I'd never been as a twin-engine pilot. And my navigator didn't want me on the, my navigator now, Shapiro was his name, incidentally. I didn't want, I didn't want to, he didn't want me on the crew because he, he said I fooled around too much on the ground. Bean. What? <laughs> Bean, you were fooling around back then too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, uh, he said, we don't want Bean on the crew because he fools around too. And then he got me on the crew. But the minute Shapiro saw that I could fly formation on a B-24, which I love formation flying, he was happy and I was happy. Everybody, the crew, was a happy crew after that. So there were already B-24s staged in Hawaii by the time you got there. And where, what were they doing there, though? Because they, had, they can't fly to a target from Hawaii, could they? Yeah. Where? Philippines, you can't reach no, that. The Japanese. There, there's a globe right there. Formation flying, you've talked about it a little bit. Well, what, what does that mean when exactly? We, when we approach an island like truck, we usually get a lot of fighter interference. And they look like guys flying airplanes with flashlights coming over. They were firing on our formations. And uh, it was... Uh, that must have been scary the first time you had an enemy uh, encounter. It was. Tell us about the first time. I, as well as I can remember the first time, we had, I can remember we were all together in flying formation, a close formation, so we'd use our protective firepower to keep the zeroes away. And uh, they, uh, we were successful in, in, in fighting off. We didn't have too many we didn't have any any losses losses when we were bombing a truck but we kept the heads down we I have many many missions against truck just to keep them down so but let's talk again about the first time that you remember seeing fighter aircraft coming in to take out your bombers do you remember that do you remember seeing the zeros uh, yes and it was scary, I bet. Yes, it was very scary, but we were all together, we were, we were firing, we, all our guns were firing, and it, it, it didn't seem to bother me too much then. So you kept on going? Yeah. Well, you guys had, how many bombers might have been in your formation at that point? Most I've ever flown was 30. 30, okay. And that was in the Pacific. So now, when, what was your first primary target that was in combat for truck. you? Truck was your first? Yes, I've got a list of my targets. You'll see truck come up many, you have it, I think. Okay. So that's amazing. I didn't even realize that was your first combat experience was Truck Lagoon. Uh, the way maybe it was maybe it wasn't Truck. It was Woji or some other island that we just used as a practice. Okay. So, but then, but that was our main target. So bef before you entered combat, though, you had been dropping live munitions for practice, right? Uh, yes, but not too much. With, 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 with smaller islands in the in the area, yes. How would they train? Like, what would you be bombing? Oh, just a, a little a, a Carl Atoll, maybe a few Japanese on it. We didn't know, but we were we were we were dropping our bombs on it just to get rid of whatever was there. Yes, just to practice because the Japs were dug in pretty deep all across the, the Pacific. Yeah, but these little islands that we, we used as training uh, weren't too bad. They were milk runs, we called them. Okay. Yeah. 